Hello, and thanks for using TickBoom, a free service that helps high school students with their math problems. In this video, I'm taking a look at question 20 of exercise uh, 5G from the Cambridge Extension 2 math textbook. So um, this is the third of three questions that I've been asked to help out with. Um, it's got two parts, part A and B. And I might tackle each of these in two separate videos. So for this video, I'll look at 20 part A. So the question is to sketch the curve defined parametrically by the vector equation r vector t is equal to t minus 2 sine t of i vector plus t squared j vector. Um, so given this is a parametric uh, vector equation, we've, we've got this parameter t here, um, but ultimately what we're going to sketch will be in terms of an x and y axis where um, for different values of t we'll get a certain x value which is what sits in front of this i vector and then we'll get a certain y value which is what will sit in front of the j vector because the i vector is basically the horizontal and the j vector is the vertical. So the basic requirement to tackle a question like this is, it's a lot of grunt work, but it's basically just picking various values of t, seeing what you get for your x and y, and then plotting it up. So I'll just start, set this book aside. Uh, in preparation, I've um, created an axis here. Um, and what I might do is I'll just um, note the equation that we're about to go about plotting. So our um, parametric vector equation is RT um, vector is equal to T minus two sine T of I vector plus T squared of J vector. And what that basically means is that um, for various values of t, basically this will give us our x value, this part here, and this part here will give us our y value. So the key is picking various values of t. Now in terms of uh, this axis that I've drawn, there's probably a few comments worth making. I mean, seeing that the y is t squared means I know we're kind of going to be all up in the positive um, in the vertical axis, so I haven't bothered to draw anything in the negative. Um, because I've got this sign t in here, the values of t that I'm going to pick, I think it makes sense to do um, things like maybe jumping up in multiples of pi on 6. So pi on 6, 2 pi on 6, or pi on 3, 3 pi on 6, pi on, which is pi on 2, and so on. Um, going up to about pi, which is, you know, a bit over 3. So that's kind of why I've picked this 3 and negative 3. I think this axis should capture the key points that we're going to want to work through. So in terms of what values of t should we pick, so um, I think t is equal to 0 is a, a natural one to always pick. And then as I mentioned, maybe jumping up in multiples of pi on 6. And I, I think that's just to... Um, end up with uh, sensible values of this sine t. So we'll go t, 0, um, we'll go pi on 6, go uh, 2 pi on 6, which is pi on 3, 3 pi on 6, which would be pi on 2, 4 pi on 6, which would be 2 pi on 3, 5 pi on 6, and then 6 pi on 6, which would just be pi, and then I think doing the negatives of these to capture both sides of the axis. So we'll go um, negative pi on 6, negative pi on 3, negative pi on 2, negative 2 pi on 3, uh, negative 5 pi on 6, and negative pi. So at the end of the day, um, being able to sketch up this curve is just doing the grunt work. So I'm going to have to get my calculator and basically just plug in for each of these values of t and we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So 13 times we're just going to do these calculations and plot them up. So I'm just going to work through that. Probably in post-production I might just 
speed it up so that you don't have to um, watch me in real time as I do this. But basically what I'm about to do is what you would have to do um, if you were required to create this chart manually. Otherwise you might just go into some software and get it to do it for you. Um, uh, I haven't actually tried that. I'm not sure whether the main ones like GeoGebra um, or Desmos, how they, how they cater for vector-based parametric equations. I assume you should be able to do it. I just haven't tried myself. I'm, I'm just going to work through this one manually. Um, so let's uh, give it a try. And at this point, it might be worth connecting the dots that we've got so far. It's this interesting kind of curve where we come up and then we loop back around. So let's just, that's kind of half the job done, pretty much. Now we've got the other half. I suspect it's going to be symmetrical, but we'll, we'll do the math just to, to make sure of that. But I think we're going to end up with essentially a symmetrical curve, so it's going to be this very interesting looking curve. Um, so let's try negative pi on 6. So and so now what we'll do is we'll connect these dots. Oops, that's that done. And then we connect these dots, and as suspected, it's symmetrical, and it's this interesting curve. So I'm not quite sure how you'd um, define such an interesting looking curve uh, in, in the old fashioned way with um, kind of Cartesian formulas, but um, this parametric uh, approach um, it was, I guess, simple enough in terms of the mechanics required to create this chart. It's just kind of like what you do with any old sketch. Um, if you have an equation in X and Y, you just pick values of X and calculate the Y. Here, everything's in terms of T. So we just pick values of T and use those values of T to get our X's and Y's. And then we're back to the old approach of just plotting it up. So hopefully, um, that, that, that all made sense and that's something you could replicate if you had to. Um, I would guess that on an exam um, you might not get such a laborious um, uh, graph to sketch because at the end of the day you're not really te being tested on your knowledge. Once you know the process it's just grunt work so um, typically you'd probably use software where possible to, to do this kind of work and maybe on exams you'd see the chart or maybe you'd be given the formula and you'd have to maybe pick, maybe it's a multiple choice question or something where you have to pick the chart that could work and maybe you do a handful of calculations to, to kind of strike out options that couldn't be possible. Uh, so yeah, hopefully you found all that helpful. If it was helpful, please be sure to give the video a like. And if you're someone who wants to keep their finger on the pulse with the kinds of questions that other students are struggling with, be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can stay in the loop. All right, tick boom.